Okay, now I've got the data imported into Logic on a system where I can use the Custom Analyzer, which again you set in Preferences and then Custom Low-Level Analyzers. So I can use the Quad Spy Analyzer from here. So the first thing I usually like to do is order things with the quad lines ordered in ascending order. It just makes it a little easier for me to see. So I'm going to put IO3 at the top, IO2, IO1, and then I usually like to have the enable line at the bottom and the clock second from the bottom. So we've got 0, 1, 2, 3. And you can see that actually there's no data that's occurring on 2 and 3. And so that means that this is probably going to be using dual spy, not quad spy. Because if it was quad, you would expect to see data on all the lines. So we've got enable on the bottom, clock, and then in pico and pokey. So IO0 and IO1. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the first data and start to analyze it. So again, that was this line right here. And so we zoom in and we see our clock oscillating. We see the enable line going low. So chip select is active low. So when it goes low, that means this chip is actually selected and now going to actually be used. So the first type of analyzer we can use is the basic spy analyzer. And so that's just built in. So you can go ahead and go to analyzers, hit plus and type spy, and you'll get the basic spy analyzer. And so here you can see it's asking for what is MOSI, what is MISO, what is clock, what is enable. And so that's why I included the, the MISO and MOSI names here, just to make it easy for me to map up. Okay, this line is MOSI, this line is MISO, this line is clock, and this is enable or chip select. And so this won't be set by default for you. That's just because I've already analyzed in this thing. So you need to select all of these. Then in terms of these other things of what's the most significant bit, how many bits per transfer, etc. Each of those is going to be defined by the particulars of your particular spy flash chip. But typically the defaults should be good for most chips that you encounter. If for some reason you're seeing completely invalid data, then you may need to go consult your uh, data sheet to see whether it uses a different setting for these. So if we hit that, then it's going to start analysis, and analysis can take a bit of time. For the basic spy flash, it's very quick, so it's not a big deal. But for more advanced things, it can take longer. So we can see that for this first byte here, it's going to be interpreted as 5A, and then the data actually coming back will be interpreted as 5.3, well, FF, 5.3, 4, 6, et cetera, et cetera. So to understand, you know, what does 5A even mean? That's one of those things where you have to consult the data sheet. And so if we look in the data sheet for byte 5A, we will see that's the read SFDP register. So serial flash discovery parameter register contains information about device configurations. So basically, at the very first thing this, this uh, Intel chip does when the system's booting up is it queries the spy flash chip to find out about its configuration so that it knows, you know, what kind of options it supports, how it's going to behave, etc. And then the one thing I would say here is that uh, it mentions that uh, there are going to be eight dummy clocks that are required before the actual data comes out. So therefore, you know, that initial, you know, uh, FF is probably the dummy data followed by the real data. But you have to double check, you know, the, the 24 bits of address coming in followed by the dummy data to confirm for sure. So indeed, we see 5A, then we see a 24-bit address, so three bytes of address. So it's reading address zero of the configuration register. Then we have eight bits of dummy data followed by the real data. Okay, so that's cool and that's interesting. We could then go interpret this and look into it more, but we're going to uh, keep moving for now just to see what other kind of stuff we see here. So 5A, 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 there's some obviously uh, querying going on. You can see that the chip select line is going high between these things, basically, you know, turning off the chip and deactivating it before it reactivates it again. Okay, so we're going to use this little thing right here, which allows us to click over to find the next edge for a particular transition for a particular line. So we got all these five A's, we're going to click over, and then right here, after these, we're now going to see A03. And so what is 03? Again, you always uh, consult and read the phone manual. So put in 03H, and you'll see that is a read data command. And it has the form of 03, a 24-bit address, and then the data will be coming out on data out 
which is the IO1. So data in on data in, data out on data out, and you know there don't seem to be any dummy clock cycles between these. So we can go here and we see 03 and the address is 00010. And then the data that's coming back is 5A, A5, F0, 0F. And, you know, if you took the architecture 4001, then you will recognize this as this is the magic uh, data that must exist at offset 10 to basically say that this spy flash chip is operating in flash descriptor mode. So Intel chips have a special format that they uh, expect here. So Intel systems, the, the PCH, expects that at offset 10, it should find this exact signature of data. And if it finds that, then it's going to interpret the subsequent data as being in flash descriptor mode. If it doesn't find that, such as on earlier systems, it'll be operating in non-descriptor mode. So this all jives. That looks like same data to us. That's exactly what we would expect. Now at this point I want to say that we can add another analyzer that will sort of start breaking apart instead of us having to look at each byte of data manually we can further add in the spy flash analyzer that is the one that is built into the extensions right so under extensions and spy flash you should have installed that and so then in analyzers you can do plus and spy flash select that it's going to ask you about some more parameters it's going to say what's your input analyzer here we're going to select the existing spy analyzer that we already had it's going to ask how many address bytes and we're going to say three so the system is using three byte addressing and then this other stuff about in, uh, decoding or minimum and maximum address we can just leave that as default so when we do that we see it start chewing through the data over here it's going to take some time to process but we can see that it has now added an interpretation here of read from address 10. And this next one is going to be read from address 14. And so this gives us a little more semantically meaningful view into what's going on. You know, read address 30. And then next we're going to have fast read 40. So if we zoom in on that, we can see that the actual byte there is 0B instead of 03. And if we search for 0B here, we're going to see that that's called fast read. And we can see that that has some, you know, dummy clock cycles here, but it's, you know, just going to be eight. And so it's going to interpret that correctly. So you can see fast read is eight, zero, 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 zero. That's uh, four, zero. That's the address. Then we have, you know, some dummy clock cycles, and then we have the actual data coming back. So it looks like it's all zeros. And in situations where you perhaps already have a dump of the spy flash, you can use that to sanity check your interpretation by you know, going to the spy flash dump, we can see that offset 10 was 5A, A5, F0, 0F, exactly what we'd expect. And offset 40 starts with four zeros followed by 0100FE, 0E, and so zero zeros for them, 0100FE, 0E. So all of this data that we're seeing in our logic analyzer, it looks to be sane and looks to match the dump that we already have. Of course, in some situations, you may not already have a dump and you're going to use the logic analyzer to construct the dump. And so in those sort of situations, you know, you have less flexibility to figure out whether or not the data is sane. Okay, so let's just keep, you know, moving along this enable line to find more commands. We've got a fast read 80, We've got a fast read 100. We keep going, fast read 140. And then now we all of a sudden have something that can't be interpreted. So this just says 187. And if we look at this first opcode byte, it says that it is BB. So let's look up BB. And that appears to be a fast read dual. So fast read dual, this is basically going to now be using two lines in parallel for data out, as well as for the address in. So there's an instruction BB, and then the address is not just serially passed in, it's passed in with the most significant bit in uh, the DO or the uh, IO1 line. So this is no longer just data out, this is no longer just data in, these are basically being used in parallel. So the most significant bit here, the next most significant bit there. So the address comes in, it's still 24-bit address, but it comes in in parallel. And then furthermore, the data out is going to come out in parallel with the most significant bit in the data out IO1 and the next most significant in IO0 then the next most significant in IO1, and so it's bouncing back and forth like that.
So this simple spy flash analyzer can't properly analyze it. Now there is supposedly an option where if you add like a parallel interpretation and then you set the spy flash analyzer to analyze the parallel interpretation instead of the spy, theoretically, you know, it will recognize the app code. Uh, in practice on this particular system, it didn't for dual spy, but it did for quad spy. Anyways, the point is the uh, the interpretation is actually incorrect. So this uh, this plugin is not correctly interpreting it, and that's why we needed this quad spy plugin in order to correctly interpret things. So now we're going to go ahead and add an analyzer and do the Q spy. We add that. It asks us some things. What's the enable? Okay, so that was our chip select. What's the clock? That's our clock. What's DQ zero? So it's a quad spy. So it's calling them DQ zero one two three. So data quad, and we're going to say that's our IO0. This is going to be our IO1. This is going to be our IO2. And this is going to be our IO3. It's going to ask us about our clock polarity. We can just assume the default for now, unless the data looks like garbage. It's going to ask us about the spy mode, and there's extended, dual, and quad. Extended, I believe, means that it can be interpreted as either dual or quad, whereas if you force it into dual or force it into quad, it can only interpret as one of those. So we're going to leave it as extended. Then it asks the number of clock dummy cycles. So for that, we're going to want to go back and you know look at the, the type of commands that we're looking for. If we look at the manual and we read the description here, it's going to say that this is accomplished by adding four dummy clock cycles after the 24-bit address. So for this particular chip, for this particular command, it's expecting four dummy cycles. Different chips can have different number of dummy cycles as described on the website. So we're going to set that to four, and then the address size is three, three bytes, 24 bits, and we're going to save and let that start interpreting things. So now you can see that it added this right here, and it's saying command BB is a dual I.O. fast read. It's going to interpret the address right here, and that's going to be address 1000. Then we have four dummy clock cycles, followed by the data coming in in parallel here. So again, if we went back and looked at the interpretation, we would see that the most significant bit is on IO1 and, least, and the next most on IO0. So if we wanted to just kind of eyeball that, we'd say on the rising edge here, this IO1 is the most significant bit, so 1, and then this is a 0. So 1, 0, 1, 0, that's going to be A. And then again, 1, 0, 1, 0, that's going to be A. All right, and again, we can use our spy flash dump in order to sanity check that this data at 1000 is AA55. So let's go ahead and click over there, go to offset 1000, and we see that indeed it is aa 5500000 d aa 5500000 d So the data looks sane to me. So you can see that the QSPY is going to take a while to chew through the data and give us the correct interpretation. So go ahead and let that complete before you move on to the next section about exporting the data in a way that you can use this data to graph a view of what sort of accesses the firmware is making to the SPY flash at boot time.